Which water bottle or water bottle brand keeps water the coldest? Is that an easy question to answer? And is it even the right question? Well, I've tested a lot of water bottles with this channel over the years, both with ice and hot water. And I'm gonna share with you three things about water bottle insulation that I've learned. Number one, which tests are most reliable? Number two, why most water bottles are essentially the same for most people. And number three, which features actually make a difference when you're trying to decide which water bottle to get in terms of insulation. Now first, I'm gonna review which types of insulation tests are really the most effective. The question, which water bottles keep water the coldest, is actually a bit misleading, and it's not really the right question to ask. When water is cold and has ice in it, it's going to be 32 degrees Fahrenheit and it's gonna maintain 32 degrees Fahrenheit in something as small as a water bottle until all of the ice melts. It's only after the ice melts that the water temperature will start to rise closer and closer to room temperature or whatever the temperature is on the outside of the bottle. Adding more ice does not lower the water temperature below 32 degrees, just means that it will maintain that 32 degree temperature for longer until all of the ice melts and the temperature starts to shift. So the real question isn't which bottle keeps water the coldest, it's which water bottle holds ice the longest. Now that may seem like a geeky thermodynamics related distinction to make, but it actually plays into why I changed how we do insulation tests on this channel. I've done ice tests before and it's the most common type that I see because most people want to know how long their ice will stay in their water bottle. When I did my ice water test, what I did was I measured the weight of the ice before and after a few hours. And so by measuring by weight, how much of that ice had melted off, I had a pretty good idea of which water bottle had the best insulation. But the problem with that is that it can be challenging to get the exact same amount of ice in different water bottles. And also to measure the weight, I was putting the ice into a strainer and letting the water drip off. But if that ice has more surface area, it might hold more water on top of it and appear heavier than it really is in terms of the ice weight. Because you're not going to be able to just stick a temperature probe into the water bottle while there's ice in it and get any kind of measurable difference in the temperature, you're only really gonna be able to measure that change once the ice has melted and the temperature starts to climb. So unless you have a setup where you can continually test the temperature through a probe that's inserted through the lid, for example, you're not really gonna be able to get reliable results because you won't know exactly when all of the ice melts. So what I did is I switched from doing a cold water test to a hot water test by taking the hottest water from my tap water, putting it in the water bottle or water bottles, depending on what kind of test I'm doing, measuring the water temperature, closing the lid and checking it again after four hours. Now, insulation works the same both ways. So this hot water test gives us a good indication of how these bottles will rank when it comes to holding ice or doing a cold water test. And because the hot water will start to cool off immediately, you don't have that same guessing game of trying to figure out when the ice is gonna finish melting because that's the trigger for when the temperature will start changing. It's gonna start dropping immediately as soon as you do the test. So it's a much more reliable comparison. So I've really started liking doing the hot water test instead of ice tests because I find it to be faster easier and honestly more reliable to give you that kind of initial indication on whether one water bottle is significantly better than the other. And that leads into the second thing that I've learned from all these water bottle tests, and that's that honestly, most of them are the same. So just to show you what I mean, this table shows some results from a test I did with my dual wall versus triple layer insulation video. And most of them ended up being roughly around the same area with a few outliers. For most people every day, they're only gonna worry about keeping ice in their water bottle maybe up to eight hours. And after that, you're gonna have finished drinking your water and you need to do a refill anyways. So if you want a good water bottle to get you through most days, all you need to worry about is getting a dual wall vacuum insulated bottle. Don't worry about all that other marketing hype and nonsense. Just focus on the vacuum insulation and then get your bottle based on all the other features that you want, like the best lid, best handle, colors, brand, whatever else you want. So which water bottle features actually do make a difference when it comes to insulation? Well, there's really three groups I like to focus on in terms of what types of factors we're talking about and how much of an impact they have on your water bottle's insulation. Number one, like I mentioned before, does it have a vacuum seal? If it's a dual wall vacuum insulated bottle, 
that's gonna be good enough for most people most days. If you want more insulation, the second most important factor is do you have a wide mouth or a narrow mouth bottle? Most of the heat transfer happens through the lid instead of through the vacuum insulation. So it makes sense that a bottle with a wider neck and a wider mouth is gonna have more heat transfer than a narrow mouth. The two outliers that tested by far the best were my only two narrow mouth bottles in that test. The flip side of this is that it can be more difficult to get ice in a narrow mouth bottle, but if you have crushed ice or the ice cubes that come out of your freezer are small enough to get into a standard mouth or a narrow mouth bottle, that is going to be the best way to get the best insulation you can and keep that ice the longest. And the third tier of variables includes things like triple layer insulation and an insulated lid. I have seen that triple layer bottles, all other things equal, do seem to test a little bit better but I'm not really sure it's worth most of the marketing hype you see around it. And with insulated lids like Takea's lid, for example, versus their traditional lid, I did a test of those two head to head and the insulated lid did test a little bit better, but again, it wasn't substantial enough to be the most important factor in your decision. These kind of factors, they really don't matter nearly as much from what I've seen as the first two factors I mentioned. And so unless you're really looking to hold ice for multiple days or maybe all things equal, you're looking at the same structure bottle and the same mouth diameter and you still want to prioritize insulation as much as possible, that's when you can start looking at these kind of factors. And if you'd like to learn more about triple layer bottles in particular and why adding a layer of copper can help with heat transfer, here's a link to a video I did last year where I did a deep dive on this topic. So I know that I've spent the last few minutes saying why most vacuum insulated bottles are effectively the same for most people, but I know that a lot of you guys would still like to know which ones technically test the best. So here's a list of the bottles that I've done that are about 32 ounces and wide mouth, just so we have some consistency on what we're measuring. And it always strikes me that some bottle brands that are more expensive like Yeti and Hydro Flask don't necessarily have as good of insulation as some cheaper brands like Ozark Trail. So just be aware that there's a lot of deceptive or misleading information and marketing out there. And don't necessarily go with the most expensive one if you're really looking to have a good insulated bottle. Links are in the description, and if you found this information helpful, the best way to support us is to click one of those links if you're gonna make a purchase anyways. It gives us a small commission, it's no extra cost to you. Thanks again, and happy hydrating.